What's up, guys? It's Chris. Warning, before attempting any plumbing repairs, make sure you shut off the main water to your home. All right, guys, thanks for joining us again today. We're going to be working on a pinhole leak. Uh, the origin of this leak is Aliso Viejo, California. This area is known for having just being plagued with pinhole leaks. As you can see, this one's a pretty good one. It's got three little sprays coming out of there. I uh, was able to find the leak because there was water coming out of the footing of the home. So I... Uh, broke open the stucco, found this little cold manifold here. Um, as you can see, there's a pipe going across the wall here. That's feeding a hot manifold somewhere. Uh, later on, after fixing this leak, I found out, did another leak detection test and found that there was a slab leak on that hot side too. So I ended up having to do another reroute after this. But anyways, I'm pull out my half inch tubing cutters and I'm going to use the closed quarters cutters there. Uh, that way I can get them in between the two pipes for the manifold. And I'm only going to cut out like, you know, maybe eight inches of pipe here. And then I'm going to use two slip couplings. I always recommend using slip couplings. I know a lot of guys are like scared of them and sh shy away from them and stuff. But when you're doing these type of uh, uh, repairs, you really need a slip coupling, at least one uh, slip coupling. And uh, there's some of them are called repair couplings but they're basically just couplings with no stops. Uh, that way you can slide it up the pipe like you'll see me do in this video here. Right here, I'm trying to show you the inside of a pipe that has had a pinhole. It's like this weird little like mound that uh, begins to form on the inside of your pipe. And it's basically the chemical chloramine has accumulated there. It's stuck to the side of the pipe with the hard water and begun to eat its way through the pipe and it's basically like what you're seeing is like a chemical reaction on the inside slowly deteriorating the copper from the inside out uh, that's why i recommend if you've had one or two pinholes in the past five years you definitely want to consider repiping before it becomes a major problem for you um Hex pipe is a great alternative. Uh, there's many different ways and things you can do with PEX pipe. Uh, that's what I would repipe your home with, and uh, that's what I highly recommend using. It's a proven and tested material, and I think nine of 10 plumbers you call will tell you that PEX is the way to go. I don't know if you can see it here, but I'm putting together like a pinhole documentary type deal. So it will be more visible and it will be explained a little bit more in depth when I get that documentary type video out. Anyways, once you cut away the infected piece of pipe, you're going to measure a new clean piece of pipe. You're also going to want to thoroughly clean the pipe that you're going to be soldering, uh, both ends. I normally use sandcloth, but I've actually become kind of partial to these uh, little cleaner tools because they clean just the perfect amount of pipe, and I really like that. It makes your solder joints a lot uh, more clean looking, typically. And now you're going to see uh, what happens when there's a little bit of water left in the line which is a good thing. It means this line's not leaking underground somewhere, but there's a little bit left, so I gotta suck it out with a little quarter inch straw. You can also do this with like a shop vac or some type of other like, you know, tool or whatever. It's just easy and it's clean water, so like whatever. I keep a little straw on my soldering kit for this purpose. Here I am cleaning the uh, two pieces, uh, the two fittings, the two slip couplings, and I'll also be cleaning the uh, little piece of pipe. Um, this tool that I'm using is awesome. It's like, it's made by Blue Magic, I believe, or Blue Monster. And, uh, it's called the, uh, trip, I forget something. Oh, I don't want to butcher the name right now, but anyways, it's a cool little tool. Look into it. And then.
subs away make sure you're part of that guys comment um we're going to be choosing random subscribers and comments and we're going to pull them together and then choose out of that who gets the the prize so make sure you like subscribe comment and uh you know tell your friends guys please help us reach 500 and after 500 we're on our way to a thousand so this is how i solder um i use the ca capillary effect where you heat one side of the copper and feed the solder into the other side um, you start from the bottom and work your way up because heat rises um, the theory is when you're the the flame the heat from the flame will actually pull the solder into the joint um, it works really well normally sometimes you'll see me kind of paint the joint a little bit with my solder it's just kind of I've had a couple different situations when I was uh, maybe a year or two ago uh, and yeah it was rough so after that, you're gonna wanna make sure you really thoroughly clean this pipe, uh, wipe it down really well. Um, if it's gonna be exposed to the elements, I'd spray a little bit of WD-40 on it and then wipe it down again. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna wanna clean it up really well, make sure there's none of your flux uh, left on the pipe. Uh, that stuff's very corrosive, we'll turn this pipe green and if anybody sees that pipe <laughs> after flux has been dripped all over and it wasn't cleaned, you're gonna say who the heck did that and hopefully if you're a good plumber you're gonna not want that to be you so just, you know make it look nice um, especially if you're learning here you want it to look nice all right guys thank you very much for watching happy holidays uh, subscribe to the channel